Welcome everybody. Today's video finds us over here in the old part of Bangkok. And we're gonna take a look at another one of the first class royal temples. Uh, if you guys remember from last week, we were over in Nakom Panom and we took a look at that amazing uh, Lao style uh, prong or the chetty, and it was quite beautiful. Anyway, we're uh, gonna take a look at another really, really famous temple here. We're gonna take a look at Wat Po. This is an old Ayutthaya era temple, but they don't really quite know exactly when it was built. Uh, they were like one of the Ayutthayan kings. They think it was built around his time, but they're not exactly sure. But what is important about it was after uh, that king built it, it became uh, defunct and it was just abandoned out here. And when King Rama I moved the capital from Tonbury after he took over power from King Taksin, he built the Grand Palace right over here by this. And this temple was in disarray, so he restored it. And it took something like seven years to restore it. And they opened it up, I believe, in 1788. And then uh, Rama I ordered all the Buddhas from some of the other temples around uh, the kingdom, like in Sukhothai, Ayutthaya, Utong, other places to be brought here. So this has a lot of Buddha images that are uh, really sacred to the, to the Thais. And the highlight of this temple is the 46 meter long reclining Buddha. Now the name of this is Wat Po, that's what everybody names, knows it as. But the real name is Wat Prachorapon Wira Ram Kala Ram Racha Wariham, something like that, it's, I can't say it. Anyway, I'll put it up on the screen. So uh, let's go here and let's take a look and uh, see what all we see. Now there's a lot of stuff to see over here by Wat Po. This is the temple grounds over here and it has the perimeter wall and it has something like 18 gates that are around it, but there's only like three of them or so that's used to go in. And there will be a uh, foreigner fee to go in here. So if you're a foreigner, you have to uh, pay like 200 baht. We'll cross that bridge when we come over to it. So it looks like right here is the entrance. So yes, it is 200 baht for a foreigner and you gotta buy a ticket to come in here. The ties can come in for free. So let's go in and take a look. All right, so we got a ticket here. It's 200 baht, which is like six bucks. So let's wander around here. This is the big wee hand that has the reclining Buddha. We'll come in and we'll see it later on. Now this temple was restored by King Rama I and it was also restored under the reign of King Rama III. I think in like the 1820s or so. And Rama III is very famous for having uh, the Chinese influence. So you will see some of the uh, like the Chinese statues, stuff like that in all of the halls. So inside here, there's, there's a little sala and it has some of the paintings. It also has some of the, like the Buddha images here and the people come and stick the gold leaf on. So these are some old paintings from, uh, I think these are from like Rama IV era and they're still kind of re remaining a little bit. It's just underneath this little building here. You can see the nice paintings up above on the top. And then uh, this is an active temple. There's a separate part here that has the monks that are in residence. And here's a monk here doing some of the blessing. Here's kind of this open courtyard. And it has all these chetties. It uh, has four major chetties and then some smaller ones. And it has two bell towers. You can see this one bell tower right here. And you see all of the little flowers and stuff like that. I believe that's the Rama III influence in some of these. You got a big drum here. And then the little water fountains. This is a pretty cavernous temple ground. I believe it's on, there's a total of something like 80 Rai that the temple itself is built on. And then you can see here, here's some of the figures, but these are uh, foreigners. And these were put in uh, during the renovation of uh, King Rama III in the 1820s. So we're gonna go and we'll look at the ordination hall and then we'll come back and we'll look at that reclining Buddha. Here's a nice look at some of these little chetties that are out here. And then this hall right here is quite nice. You can see it's in the Bangkok styling, but it's, uh, it's locked up for some reason. But anyway, that's not the ordination hall that we want to see anyway. This will be it over here and it will have a, uh, a double cloister, the uh, double row of the seated Buddhas. And when Rama I had all the Buddhas brought here, they were like the stoned 
Buddhas, and then they, uh, they covered them in plaster, and then they gilded them. So there will be different styles, but he gilded them all to where it makes them look uh, very similar. And there's also a real famous Buddha that they brought in from uh, Wat Si Sam Pet in Ayutthaya. And hopefully we'll be able to see all of these. Let's go take a look in here. So that's the entrance into the cloister, and then we'll see inside of this little hall. Yeah, this one here is quite nice. Yeah, this is the main Buddha in here, and then it has the marble flooring. And this one here is uh, the Palai style. This is from like the Utong era, and it has really famous. You see how it has a hand up and down, and then it'll have the monkey and the elephant giving the main Buddha the offer. So doing a little renovation on the doors and stuff like that. This temple's so big that there's constant renovation being done. Last time I came, they were redoing the gates and some other things here. So we'll go into this. Now this is the cloister and it'll have these rows of Buddha images that are all facing towards the central building. And we can see a chedi over there. Yeah, this is really nice. And some more of these Chinese figures. Yeah, there's so much to see here at Wat Po. And then what they say there's is the double. There's the first row, and then there's another inner row of all of these Buddha images. And this right here, this is the ordination hall. And it is massive. Now, whenever Rama I renovated this temple in 1786 or 1788, he built this in the Ayutthaya style. But when Rama III restored it, in the 1820s, he modified it to the Bangkok styling, and it is just massive. So let's go in here, and then we'll look around some of these others. And you can see here has uh, some of the little chetties on the corners, and then over here has the Buasima stones. Now this is a royal temple, so we'll have a double row of these Buasima stones. Let's go in here now into this ordination hall. Now there's several little. Uh, Wee hands and salas and everything else that are around here. But this one and where the uh, reclining Buddha are is what you want to see. Now you see here, this is a humongous threshold. So they're doing some renovation to the main Buddha in here. So as you can see, there's a ceremony going on here, so we won't be able to see a whole lot. But they're renovating there, and you can see some of the murals and all of that up on the walls, but there's not any way to really walk around here. We'll come back in a bit. Let's look in this little hall right here, and then we'll make our way back over to the reclining Buddha. So you can see here, this is another uh, really, really nice Buddha image. And then it has some of the old musical instruments right in these cases over here. This is pretty cool. Have the old drums and the old xylophones and then some more of them over there. Now this was known as like a university. I think it was like Thailand's first university. They used to have writings up on the wall and they've actually uh, taken and incorporated those writings that used to be up on the walls here and put it into the UNESCO like uh, world history. And there also is the Thai massage here. This is where they used to uh, teach how to do the massage. And this is about as good a look as we can get of this ordination hall. Just because there's so much stuff around it, it's really hard to kind of get a good look at it. This is a nice look at one of these chetties here. Now I believe one of these has the ashes of King Rama I, and one has the ashes of King Rama II. The ashes to King Rama III are over in Tonbury, and then the King, King Rama IV's ashes as at another temple that's not too far from here. And here's another one of these little buildings with another Buddha image in it. And this one here has some, uh, some old pottery. And you can still see it has like the black and the gold doors. It has so much stuff here to see.
and another really famous Buddha. Okay, so this building right here is to the east of the ordination hall. So this is what the principal Buddha image will be facing. You can see the styling up there has the Garuda and then the, uh, the angel on the Garuda's back. You can see here, this is definitely Rama III styling with the Chinese style. And you got these figures here carved in the stone. And then we'll come in here and we'll take a look at this right here. So it has this massive standing Buddha. Wow, this is quite something here. And it's in the, like the subduing Mara posture, I believe is what that's called, with the hand, hand out like that. And then the other one down at the side. Okay, so one last little look at this. I'm not sure how tall that it is. It looks like it's maybe about 20, 20 meters or so tall. So we looked at all of that around the ordination hall. It has all these little chetties. These, I believe, are minor royals that have been cremated and their ashes are interned here. And then you can see all this. This is on that little covered walkway with all those Buddhas. It has those uh, nice yellow and red and black ceiling tiles or roof tiles. And then it has all these little figures, lots of little rock features out here. It's quite a nice area. And then check out one of the gates. So let's look at this door because it looks so cool. So here is the gate. And then look at the painting on it. Oh, that is fantastic. And then it has all the little pieces of tile all around it make the patterns. And right outside, the, that's outside of the gate. That's the uh, clock tower. There's quite a bit in this area to see. And like I said earlier, a place like this is always under some kind of renovation. You can see right here, they're redoing this gate. They got all the workers out there doing the new plaster work and stuff. Some more of the renovation. There's a little hall that they have covered there. Let's go through here and let's look at these big chetties right quick. Okay, so I said it wrong earlier. The four chetties around there that have the Khmer prong at the top are not the ones dedicated to Rama 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's these big, these four right over here. And there will be the ashes of Rama 2 and Rama 3 in here. And this blue one, this is the one that was the last one built by King Rama 4. It has uh, little doors up there. Now they consider this what they say is the, the Great Chetty. And it's built like the Chetty in Ayutthaya. The Sira Tai or whatever that was, dealt, that was built for that heroine that saved uh, King Narasuan's life, his mother. So it's built in the same style as that. Yeah, how cool is that? And there's the second bell tower way over there. Okay, so let's keep going over and we'll go and find the uh, reclining Buddha now. This is the uh, Thai Museum, Nuad Thai Museum. So this looks like just a free little walking museum that you can come in and see what's here. The cultural heritage of humanity. Some of the really nice Buddha images that they've moved into here. Talking about Thai massage and Thai wisdom. And have a nice little moon drop looking building right here. We got some gals here dressed up in the Thai traditional clothes doing the Instagram pictures today. It looks like this is closed up, but uh, doors are quite nice. You see some more of the Chinese styling. And this hall right over here, that's our goal now. This is the last thing we'll look at at this temple. We have a, an old tree here. Now there's supposed to be the sacred tree. I don't know if this is it. That is from the Bodai tree in Sri Lanka. That was from the Bodai tree in India. So they took a little sapling from the Bodai tree in Sri Lanka that they'd taken one from India to keep the connection to uh, where Buddha got enlightenment under the Bodhi. A pretty cool door. So here's the last building we're gonna go in and check out. We got some more of the Chinese figures. This will be the reclining Buddha. Now when you come in here, you can't wear your hat. 
take off your shoes. You got to carry your shoes in a little bag with you. But this is the highlight of this temple. So this is a 46 meter long reclining Buddha. You can see it goes all the way up to the top knot and it just barely fits in this wee hand. And it's resting its head on the double pillows right here. And you can see the pedestal that it's built on. And then that's way down there is his feet. This is amazing. And then if you look on the walls, they have all the murals painted everywhere. And with what's normal in here is it's really tough to see these big reclining Buddhas. It's because they're so big and the support columns make it hard to see everything. But you can get a nice look at these murals. These are definitely Rama four style or Rama four era murals. The Bangkok styling. I'm a big fan of the temple murals, as you can all remember from my videos. So when you're walking around in here, you can see all these beautiful murals. Nobody looks at the walls. They're all looking at the reclining Buddha. But the murals are fantastic also. So you can see it has these support columns. And it does make it hard to see the, the big Buddha. You can just kind of catch glimpses of it. You can see how it looks. It's a Sukhothai style reclining Buddha. See the kind of the egg shaped face and then elongated ears. So this is the pose right here before Buddha passed away and went to uh, Nirvana. It's like the, the final pose for him. You'll see somewhere they have him like laying completely on his side where he's in like the death pose. And this whole hall just has murals the whole length. And you can just catch glimpses of the, the big reclining Buddha every little bit. And you can see the, the ceiling has that red and gold in that teak wood up there. Oh yeah, this is quite beautiful. You can look at another mural here. You'll see some pretty wild pictures in these murals. You got the elephants, you got pigs, people sleeping in the house. You'll see some really, really wild stuff. A lot of times you'll see people drinking and gambling or people getting killed. And it's uh, just kind of some of the stories that they all know. So this is kind of a nice little shrine. See this really, really old reclining Buddha. And then this is a picture of King Rama III. And then this is uh, King Rama V, King Chulalongkorn over here. And I'm not sure who this is. That might have been the queen that, uh, that died. King Rama V's first queen that died in the boating accident on the Chao Praya. And another old Buddha here. So we made it all the way down to the feet of the, the Buddha. And at the end, on the bottom, we'll see the mother of pearl inlay. But just to give you an idea how big this is. Yeah, this is quite fantastic. So on the bottom of the reclining Buddha's feet are all these mother of pearl inlays. And it's different figures. You have figures of elephants, you got the angels, and the little toe prints have to go a certain direction. And then I can't remember exactly what they call these, but this is like the center of your being. And that's what each of these little things here have. Yeah, this is really, really nice. I've seen them do the mother of pearl before and it's quite uh, labor intensive to do it. And they've done it on these, uh, the Buddha feet. And then you can see over here more of the murals all around. And then this is the backside of the Buddha. So all the way from his feet, way, way up there, up to his head. You can see over here on this wall some more of the murals. Yeah, you could easily, if you uh, really like to see artwork like this, you could spend half a day in here just looking at the murals. And then what you do, you get some coins here, and then people come and they drop the little coins off in these alms bowls. They do that for luck. All right, so let's walk out of here and look around a little bit more. And this right here is about as good a look as we can get of that hall with that big, huge reclining Buddha. Yeah, the styling is fantastic. And then right next to it, they have this big fountain here. It's a nice place for people to stop, drink some water, get out of the heat. 
You can always tell the tourists that are like beet red in the face. And you can see the outside of this hall. Now that 46 meter long reclining Buddha, I guess it has like a brick core and then they put the plaster over it and then they gilded it from there. Yeah, kind of cool. You can just see the head and the feet right here through that mesh. So this is one last little look around here. Here is that hall with the uh, reclining Buddha and then all those big chetties over there for uh, the four kings and then this little courtyard. Before we go, let's walk over there and see if the, the ceremony is still going on. Yeah, this is a really nice look here. And you have the giants right here guarding the entrance. Yeah, this whole place is quite beautiful. Okay, so it looks like they're just finishing up here with the ceremony. So you can see they got the scaffolding up around the Buddha. They're redoing some stuff up there. And then there's murals all in here and the columns and then over here is where the buddhas or the monks were at doing the the chanting earlier and you can see the the doors are all the mother of pearl and then has this humongous mural here now, i don't know if that right there represents like ayutthaya you'll see that in a lot of these here with the old ayutthaya wall wall but it's kind of octagonal shape, so I would assume it is. You can see some of the fantastic murals here on this wall. Yeah, they've done a nice job in here. And then down at the base, they have Rama Ten and his wife, and then the Queen Mother here. All right, so this is everything. That's gonna finish up uh, another one of these uh, videos over here in Bangkok. Today we were at Wat Po, this is a beautiful first-class temple that's right here, kind of next to the Grand Palace. There's uh, a lot to see in this area. If you come over here, do a walking tour around this area, you got, like the city pillar, you got like the old uh, drum tower, you got these temples, Wat Po, Wat Maha Hat, and a bunch of others. This is a great area. So you'll definitely want to come here, definitely see the Grand Palace. This is right next to it. And uh, this is one of the 10 first-class royal temples that are inside of Bangkok itself. I've done a video of nine of them. I have uh, one more to go and I'll do that here in the next little bit. And then I'll put all these first class videos into uh, all the temples into one video so you can get a look at all 24 throughout Thailand. So anyway, if you, uh, if you enjoyed this video, definitely uh, smash the like button and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new here. That's what I do. I just walk around, show you things that I see and tell you a little bit about what I know. So if you like this kind of stuff, then definitely stick around and uh, subscribe and you're notified when I post a new video. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you uh, think. I know I missed some things. This place is massive. It's, uh, we got to look at the ordination hall and the reclining Buddha. That's the two main things that you want to see. So anyway, from over here in Bangkok at Wat Po, remember, life is a journey. Until next time. Enjoy.